Godzilla is taken from the Japanese word Gojira, which when broken down translates to two separate meanings, gorilla and whale. The Merriam-Webster dictionary defines Godzilla as something particularly enormous, and right next to the definition is a picture of your mom. Made to look. Stupid. So stupid. You're so dumb. Godzilla. Minus one. Minus one what? Minus one Godzilla? That'd be like zero Godzillas. It is the latest Godzilla flick from Toho Studios and is the first Japanese produced flick to feature the titular beast since the critically acclaimed absolute banger of a creature feature, Shin Godzilla. And then some monster sized shoes to fill. Fuck you, I can make all the lame puns I want. It's my goddamn show. In the film, a Japanese pilot encounters a terrifying monster at the end of the Second World War that kills his comrades when he fails to act. Grease stricken by his own cowardice, he returns home to a decimated Tokyo and seeks to rebuild his life with a new family. Years later, the monster returns and attacks the pilot's homeland, and it is up to him and his fellow Japanese citizens to band together to destroy the beast. Give me the good stuff. Right out the gate, I was stoked for this flick being a period piece. Set against the backdrop of a war-torn Japan on its last leg is just a gnarly way to start a monster movie. And I'm here for it. There's not an obscene amount of monster mayhem in Godzilla Minus One, but when the shit hits the fan, well, let's just say you're gonna need a new fan. There's one scene in particular right around the midpoint of the movie that is clearly meant to be their showstopper of a scene, and needless to say, I had to pick my goddamn jaw up off the floor. Speaking of jaws, there's a lengthy sequence in which Godzilla is chasing a fishing boat through the ocean, and the whole vibe feels very inspired by the third act of Spielberg's classic Shark Flick. And if you know anything about me, then you know that shit straight up flicked my gig. And hard. American suck at making Godzilla movies. Plain and simple. That ugly motherfucker always ends up becoming some sort of anti-hero that the audience is supposed to relate to. And you know what? Fuck that shit! Godzilla is at his best when he's at his most basic. A force of nature out to ravage and destroy, leaving a devastated human population in his wake. That's when he's the scariest, and when the metaphor that he represents hits the hardest. In its representation of Godzilla, Minus One checks all of those boxes and then sets them ablaze with a nuclear energy beam courtesy of a radioactive giant fucking dinosaur. Whoa, no. They say we've got to go and do the shit. Unlike a lot of Godzilla flicks, mostly the American ones, this is a well-plotted story and character-driven narrative and not simply a picture where the monster shows up and things go boom. But an unfortunate side effect of that is the minimization of monster mayhem. Like I said, when the action comes, it comes hard and it comes heavy. Just like me, baby, got the old ball and chain knocked up on the first try. But unfortunately, said action is sparse, to say the least. I'm starting to feel like this movie is just a big metaphor for my sex life. Speaking of dudes not getting any, her lead character is a little bit of a whiny twat. When we first catch up with Homeboy, he has abandoned his charge as a kamikaze pilot and manages to let an entire garrison of men be annihilated by Gojira because of his failure to act. So for the rest of the movie, he just pouts and whines, pouts some more, and when he's not pouting, Shouting and whining, he's screaming and crying. At one point in the picture, I found myself thinking that the amount of screaming he was doing rivaled that of Jesse in Freddy's Revenge. Not ideal. Obviously, any good character needs to have some sort of growth, so it's not necessarily a bad thing that he starts out as a whiny little twat, as long as he is given the opportunity to earn his stripes and progresses as a character by the end of the movie. But, spoiler alert, this motherfucker is still crying like a baby back bitch by the end of the picture. Go ahead and give me that Watch. I think I'd have to rank this very closely with the OG Gojira and Shin Godzilla in terms of rewatchability. Maybe even a little bit higher because it is such a well-paced and well-told story. Either way, I can't wait to get my hands on a hard copy so I can watch that shit over and over again. Godzilla Minus One is not only one of the best Godzilla movies I've ever seen, but one of the best kaiju movies, period. And I can say that with a vote of confidence after seeing the trailer for what Legendary Pictures has in store for us next year with Godzilla X.
Kong. Toho Studios, on the other hand, brought the fucking goods with Godzilla Minus One, which could arguably sit as the third entry in the Godzilla Holy Trinity, which includes Gojira, Shin Godzilla, Godzilla 98. But what, what are you doing in there? How'd you get in there? Crazy guy? You're crazy, man. Well, guys and gals, that's going to do it for this round of the Johnny Horror Reviews. I'm your host, Johnny Horror, here to remind you youngsters to be good to one another, be half-decent human beings, and always remember, size does matter. Can't be in the top three anymore, man, not with this new one. Get out of here. I'll watch you later for the thousandth time.